like I said, this is a live support hour. And if you need help with anything, this is it for you. And um, this is Johnny Gomez. Can't hear Johnny. I can hear Nelson. Okay. All right. We'll get that fixed. Thank you so much, everyone, for letting us know. And again, if you're in the live chat, uh, let us know where you're coming from. And thank you so much for joining us. All right. So if you have any questions uh, regarding Webflow, web design, uh, go ahead and start queuing them in in the live chat now. And uh, our moderators, Lacey and Matthew, will send that over to us. And also, if you have any uh, project issues or want us to review your project later in the stream, uh, our moderators will pin a form link at the top of the chat, and those will also be sent to us. All right. And um, there's these three tips that uh, Johnny wanted to bring over to the stream that he said that he uses almost for every Webflow project that he works on here at Webflow. And I want to get into that and learn from him. So Johnny, show us these three quick tips. I want to I want to learn from you and see what you do behind the scenes to make beautiful Webflow projects. I learned so much from you and maybe you can learn a bit from me today. <laughs> All um, right. I just want to double check that audio is coming out and, uh, and people can hear me in the stream. Yeah, Johnny is, says Johnny is muted. Let's see here. We'll get it working, everyone. Don't worry. Um, let's see here. He here from Temecula. Oh, hi, Temecula. Yes. Yes, Harrison is from France. We have Kaluber.designstudio from Germany. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's go, Johnny. Let's learn. Let's dive in. Um, so I'm going to be showing three uh, examples today. The first one is going to be um, how to customize line breaks uh, across different viewports. Mm -hmm. um, the second example is going to be how to tweak with CSS underline. Um, and my third example is going to be how to color SVG icons with the text color. Okay. So I'm going to go into the first example now. Um, and let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's go. So, you know, I think the H1 is one of the main things that you should focus uh, when you're landing on a page. And yeah. it's almost like your hero is as good as your H1. So yeah. what I have here, it's like first line on the top is kind of like it's heavier visually. And mm -hmm. I would love to actually maybe make it look like this. Okay. And that looks great. I'm just going to go through my different viewports. Looks good here. Looks good here. And then here, I would actually like, I wouldn't like that line break, so I'm going to do this. Hmm. But yeah, then when I go right back, back. Okay. when I go back, I still have the same issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press intro here to get the line break. And I'm going to press shift and the left arrow. Hmm. So I'm actually selecting that line break. And I'm going to wrap it with a span. By wrapping it with a span, I can now add a class to it. So I'm going to create, um, let's say, this class called line break. And now I can choose when I want that to be showing or not. So in this case, I want it to be hiding here. And here we go. Now I have an H1 that looks good across all my viewports. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Because like um, when you're removing that line break uh, using the backspace key on your keyboard, you're actually just uh, removing it from the HTML. Whereas you're setting a CSS to that line break, and now you have more control over it per per breakpoint. Exactly, and and, and imagine going through different viewports and having you know line breaks for for tablets, line breaks for landscape, mobile, and just line breaks for whatever you want to use them. Yeah, I, I never thought of doing that because, like, uh, to to be honest, whenever that happens to me, I'm like. I'll just squeeze the the font size. You know, I'll use a font size of like uh, viewport width units, uh, but that makes more sense. That has more control. So yeah, I'm gonna be using that more. Thank thanks for that quick tip. Um, awesome. Yeah. And if anyone has any questions for Johnny regarding his quick tips, let us know in the live chat. We'll answer those too. So what's next? Awesome. So my next uh, example is underlines. Um, so 
here, you know, when I hover, I got this underline on the nav. Um, I would like to customize it a bit. If I wanted to customize it even more, perhaps I can go with a border bottom and I can start tweaking that. However, um, what is not really well known is that CSS has a lot of uh, different properties that you can customize your underlines. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my navigator. I'm going to go to, to this HTML embed that I have on this page. I'm going to press Enter to open it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste these three lines right here that I have that are basically, hmm. the first one is position. So where do I want that line to be? Second one is the thickness. And be mindful that you always have to add the important label here uh, because this will override uh, Webflow's property. Hmm. And then the third one is the underlying color. Hmm. So I'm just going to save this. Close. Oh, wow. <laughs> and now you can see, whoa, that, that was not what I expected. Yeah. So uh, I want in, when, when the link is current, I want that to be underlined. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my CSS. And you can see that you can tweak this as you want. So 100M is probably a bit too much. What I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to put 0.1M, which makes it a responsive underline, depending on what your font size is. And I'm going to save that. And you can mm -hmm. see that line right like I want it. And instead of having this color, I'm going to go with inherit, which is going to take the color from the font. OK. And, and, and to now, those uh, to those in the stream, if you're trying to take a screenshot or trying to record this stream or or you're like writing down on notes uh, the, the exact code that Johnny has here, don't worry. Johnny has promised us to give us a clonable link so you can just copy and paste this into future projects. Absolutely. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Um, and now you'll see that the underline, you know, there's a little spacing here. It, it in, in my opinion, it, it adds a little bit of finesse and you can also start, you know, kind of like matching those underlines with, with different borders that you have. Um, and I do think that kind of like knowing those three lines, uh, is a great resource for whenever you work on, on projects. Okay. And uh, right now, uh, Amy Hood is in the live chat and she's asked, uh, she's saying uh, the header font is epic. What font is that? I agree. Uh, so, um, hello, Amy. Uh, first of all, um, good to have you here. Um, the font is called Henrietta. It's, um, by, it's mm. made by Kyle Benson from Very Cool Fonts. Um, and they're selling it in futurefonts.xyz. Kyle is super talented. He's a member of our team, and I couldn't be prouder of using this font here. Wow, that is nice. Yeah, I don't know how designers create fonts. <laughs> that's a, that's a whole different mindset. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Let's see here. Okay, so uh, underline. So um, I actually had a question uh, about that. Mm -hmm. So you're using uh custom css custom code yes. to to create the thickness the color uh to control all of that mm -hmm. and um i've been using border bottom for um divs and 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 text links and whatnot so what would you say is the difference between the two would you would uh, uh why did you go custom css route rather than border bottom that's a great question um, so, so here's the situation. When you have a link, uh, you, you do want to have a safe area where you can click and not only leave it directly to, to the text. So right now, all of this area is clickable. Yes. If I were to add a border bottom here, what would happen is that it would be added to the bottom of this box. So I would have to actually tweak this button to be this, this size therefore removing all of this kind of like safe area to click. Oh, okay. By doing underline, you can attach it to the text. Obviously, there's different ways to do things in CSS and in development. So, you know, you could have a link block with a text inside and the text could have an underline and you could be triggering a hover, like um, affecting an element based on another hover. Um, but I feel like this is a good solution, at least for this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense because like, rather than having, um, uh, two separate elements or even three, um, to customize this, mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, those three lines of code 
really just helps it so you can have just one nav link element rather than three. All right. All right. Totally Absolutely. Understand. And you can also, uh, if you wanted, you can use uh, animations on, on, on this by using current color, uh, which kind of like takes me to my next uh, uh, part. Okay. Okay. Well, before we get to the next part, there's a question from mm -hmm. Drift Society asking, what about using linear gradient? And I'm guessing, can you add gradient to that underline? You could add whatever you want as long as you can do it in CSS. Huh. Okay. I'm going to try that. There, I mean, as with everything, there has to be a way. There has to be a way. I, I've seen awesome uh, examples of gradients. Um, I've seen awesome examples of uh, people like actually changing the color of this, um, kind of like changing the hue every five seconds. I've seen people changing, um, just like changing the underlying position to also be like in, in different in different places, more under, more at the top. It's just like, it, it really depends on what goes better with your brand, I'd say. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, so what is the third tip you have for us? Awesome, and the third tip is how to color SVGs depending on the text color. So, you know, here I have this sort of like you know, uh, fictional radio station, and I have these buttons here, and I have an image uh, here for an icon. And what I want is whenever I click on this, I want the background to change to, to go to the darker color and the text to go to the lighter color. So what I have here is that when I click, I change the background. Awesome. And my second action is change the color. Mm -hmm. But when I change the color, my my SVG is actually not changing the color. So what happens is that when I click on this, I'm losing that. Yeah, I'm losing the icon. So uh, instead of actually uh, using the, the SVG file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, and I'm going to press Command E to open the spotlight, and I'm going to add an HTML embed. And I'm going to be pasting my SVG here. And here you see that we have the actual color. So instead of using this color here, I'm going to use current color. And okay. I'm using uh, camel case, but you could literally not use it if you want. It would still work. It was something that didn't used to work, but now it does. Mm -hmm. uh, so current color, all in, in, in lowercase or with camel case. And I am going to be saving this. And here we go. And I'm going to be adding the same class that I had for this one. So let's see. This one is called radio button icon. I'm going to press right to go to the element. And I'm going to paste it here too. Delete this image that I that it, that is still an SVG, but not an SVG in code in an embed. And now I'm going to preview it. And now when I click, it's actually respecting and following the color of the text. Wow. Okay. So you've removed the the color that was encoded that was like hard coded into that SVG, but now you're telling the stroke of those uh, of those SVG lines and whatnot to say take the current color of mm -hmm. my parent, basically. Exactly, and and this one is this one specifically is using strokes. But um, the, the important thing to do here is that you're going to uh, add your code and you're going to have a hex color. Sometimes you're going to have it in fill. Sometimes you're going to have it in stroke, depending on the icon. If you mm -hmm. see a hex code for a color, change that to current color. Change any color that you want to affect with current color. And you can also get you know, ingenious and maybe having some set colors for some things and then current colors for other things. So you can start like animating parts of your SVGs. Oh, okay. Okay, so change it up. And I see a note from Miguel O in the live stream. Welcome, Miguel. Uh, he's saying, remember to add width and height to the SVG code. Otherwise, Safari won't render it for some reason. Good note. Good note That's a good note. Yeah. I believe that if, if you remove it from the SVG, but you still have it on the CSS, it should work cross browsers, but you need to have it in CSS oh. because if if you remove it from here, then Safari doesn't know uh, what like where to get the, the the width and height. Okay, 
All right, thank you. And uh, ZO is, or Z0, I think, uh, is asking, will difference blending do the same stuff? It, it might or it might not, depending on the background of your color. You know, you could also choose to use filter invert, um, but the inverted color is not always the color that you want. Mm. And with in this way, you have way more control um, than by using blending. Uh, the, the, uh, a mixed blend mode that you would just almost be like experimenting on on how it would look. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for these three quick tips. Uh, now let's get on over to the Q and A portion of the stream. Again, these last say forty minutes are for you all. We're going to be answering your questions. So uh, go go ahead and start submitting them in the live chat. If you have any questions about web design, web flow, um, or if you have any projects that you want us to look over, submit them in the link that's pinned at the top of the live chat, and Johnny and I will get to them. All right, so let me load up the first one real quick. Uh, let me see here. All right, so this first one is from Kevin. He says, this is my one page portfolio as I start my freelance journey. And um, Johnny, do you see my screen? Are you able to see I, my screen? I, I can, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly scroll through this. And I think I also saw this on the Webflow subreddit. So welcome, Kevin. Or, or Kev. Yeah, Kevin. All right. So here we go. I'm Kev, your neighborhood web designer. Is this a play on Spider-Man? <laughs> your friendly neighborhood web designer. All right. So there's this photo. We have some um, SVG shapes in the background. I wasn't born in Bayonne, uh, New Jersey, but I have the heart and address of a local. I'm here to give small businesses a digital voice through custom websites that help tell their story and build loyalty. All right. Okay, he, he's putting out the facts. There are over 4,000 businesses in Bayonne. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Bayonne? Bayonne? How do you stand out from your competition? Okay. I, I love the font. What font is that? You being a designer, can you figure out what a font is without um, looking it? It looks up? like space mono, but I'm not entirely sure. I could be wrong. Okay. Oops, I went too fast. All right. Oops, I should be scrolling with this. There we go. There, more smooth scrolling. Sorry about that, everyone. All right. All right. Three columns, three columns. Are you a team grid or a team flex box? Uh, that's a hard question. I'm on both teams, depending on the situation. However, Flexbox Gap has pulled me a little bit closer to the Flex team. All right. Just, just, just a little bit. All right. Like the colors that's going on. All right. And that's the end of his one pager. All right. So what do you think, Johnny? Oh, I like what's going on over there. It's moving. I, I really like it. Um, I think it's it's simple, but still has all the information uh, that's needed. Um, I would probably check the contrast on see my work button uh, when it comes to text uh, color with background color. Mm. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think that uh, the contrast is enough to be 4.5 if, if we're talking about WCAG. So are you talking about like the red, green, the blindness right here? Um, so if, if, if you were like in the, in the web flow designer and you selected the color, um, the white text on that green teal ish color, um, let's see, um, if you could select the text color. Oh, the text color. Okay. Instead of the background color. There we go. Oh yeah. It is a fail right here. So let me zoom in real quick. So right here, um, the contrast ratio is 2.8. So yeah so bump so you know making the button a little bit darker um it's gonna improve uh ah, okay so just make it or least, that yeah right here would help with the contrast ratio and you'll get a double a or if you want to just go full black then you'll get triple a and, and it, it i think it's such an interesting you know like um it's it's, it's very important when you're even thinking about a brand and what colors you want to use that you think about this 
because sometimes you just like choose a brand for your color. And then when you're applying that color to call to actions, none of them are passing color contrast. And that means like, do I have to change my brand color? Yeah, maybe there's companies that actually did that, like Auth0, they made their orange darker, for example, and changed their orange across all their platform. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. All right. Got to stay accessible. All right. Anything else you want to say about this one right here? Um, I, I'm just like, uh, again, I really like the, the font that's being used. I don't, I don't know if I've seen that font in many other places. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. So these go straight to the, uh, the work I would, uh, if you want to expand upon this project, uh, Kevin, uh, and make it multi-page because would be really interesting. What would be really nice is actually having case studies. Um, like what did you actually have to do, um, for each of these, uh, projects that you worked on? Are they real projects or are they experimental that you just wanted to, to do for a learning experience? Um, and just show like before and afters, uh, if you have any testimonials from that, uh, client that could help too. Uh, if you have any data to prove, like I help their page speed score go from, uh, from 34 to 99 or even a hundred, like stuff like that, rather than here's my work could really add more, um, value to these cards. So instead of going to the current website, um, they can go to a CMS page in Webflow with all that, that data, because, you know, a website is just, just a website. You're actually serving people and you're helping them get to their new goals. So what did you do to help that? And how can you prove that? And if there's any testimonials that like seals that deal, all right. Um, yeah, let's see here. So nice hover effects. So I changed the color, but um, yeah, iconography. I like. I really like the color choices, but maybe that's just me. What do you think, Johnny? I like the color choices too. All right. I'm not much of a designer, but I'm like, oh, it's pretty colors. All right. Why do you prefer Webflow? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, cool. Spill the tea. Got it. All right, so good luck, Kevin. Um, hopefully this helps. And yeah, keep going with that. All right, we have uh, another question. This one is from Victor. How can I set up an FAQ using Webflow CMS? Ooh, oh yeah. Do you wanna take this one on, Johnny, and share your screen, or you wanna pass it over to me? Um... I can talk about it or sharing my screen like in a, in a brand new project. Yeah. Or I, I mean, I have a new brand new project. I just if you wouldn't to... mind take, okay. taking, taking that. I'll take it. Yeah. So let's go to my screen and here we go. So this is a brand new project, no collections. And so usually what I would do uh, for FAQs is I would create a new collection, name it FAQ. And then I would just have name, but I would rename name to question, save field. And I don't have to touch the slug. That's fine. And then I would add a rich text for the answer. Okay. And I'm going to create the collection and let's go and go ahead and add 10 sample items and let that happen. Round and round we go round and round there we go all right so let's pretend these are the questions right and let's go ahead and let me just pull in a webflow layout pre-made layout we'll go with um hmm, we don't have a good layout for this so let me just make one from scratch all right so i'm gonna drag in a section and so what i'm doing right now is creating like an faq and i I know there is already pre-made accordions out there in, in the Webflow community and you can get them, but we're going to make uh, an accordion from scratch. So let me put in a container. There we go. And in the container, I'm going to put in a collection list. And so this collection list is going to pull data from FAQs. And so there we go. 
and now we have all of our FAQs. Now, if I want to see what the data looks like and press preview, it looks like nothing. Why? Because we didn't add any data into the collection list. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to add a, let's go ahead and add a, <laughs> I'm thinking a link block. All right. And in this link block, we're going to, let's see here. Let's go ahead and put the text inside. So inside the link block, we're going to have a text. Oops. Text block. There we go. And it's not going to look pretty. I'm not styling this. I'm just doing this for function uh, just to show you. But you can style it however you want. And I'll let you go ahead and clone this if you want. But um, I'm going to pull the text from question. All right. And then right under that, I'm going to have a div. And this div block, inside this div block, I'm going to put a rich text. Wait, wait. Oh, because it's inside the link block. Sorry about that. Let me put the div outside of the link block. There we go. I want the link block by itself. And then this div block right here. And inside of it, we're going to have a rich text. And we're going to pull the rich text from answer. All right. And now... Uh, so those are our answers. And what I can do is this div block, I want to make sure that when I, I want it to collapse, like the accordions that you usually see around the, the web, I want that to collapse. And so when it collapses, I want to make sure that nothing is shown beyond its bounds. So let me show you an example of, of that. Okay, so let me go to the div block. And we're going to set the height to, say, 100 pixels. Oh no, it looks broken, but that's the example I want to show you because I want to open up like an accordion and close like an accordion, but I don't want anything to show beyond its bounds. So what I can do is overflow hidden and there we go. So when I want that animation to happen, I want it to go like this. All right. And that's what I want. So we can remove that height for now but make sure that we keep it overflow hidden. And now let's go ahead and create, now that we have the structure and the CSS ready, let's go ahead and create the, the magical JavaScript, AKA Webflow Interactions. So let me go to the link block right here. And we're going to click on the lightning bolt for interactions. And then we're going to do mouse click. So on first click, I wanna start an animation and that animation is open accordion. And let's go ahead and select the div that's holding our rich text block. And we're gonna set the size as initial state. So what initial state means is when the web page first loads, what does this element look like on first, first load? So I'm gonna set the height to zero. That's what I want. I want it to not show up. And the reason why we're not seeing any reached text is because we set the overflow to hidden, right? And now we're going to go ahead and add another step and set the size to auto, all right? And if we preview this, it'll look like this. Now it's going really fast and it doesn't really have that cool easing. So what we can do is add some sort of ease. And you can play around with each of the easings to, to fit your style, the feel of your brand. But there you go, and it's going really fast. Let me set it to like one second. Okay, so there we go. We'll leave it like that. Click Save, and now I'm going to do a second click, and this is for the close. And what I can do is just duplicate that, that uh, animation I'm going to delete that second step, and this one will no longer be initial state. Use the same ease, use the same duration, save, and we've created, and there we go. We've created accordion with FAQs. And there's a lot more things you can do with it. You can get fancy, adding gradients, icon uh, iconography for a drop down arrow that spins to turn to an up uh, arrow. Um, then there's so many clonables out there that you can pull from and put Webflow CMS content into it. But this is a very, very basic example. The very 
um, the, the foundations of accordion with Webflow collections. All right, hopefully this helps Victor. All right, going to the next one. Z-O, I have my H1 black in color, but when I publish it, it goes white. I don't know why. All right, let me pull up your page here. Let's go, oh, nope, there we go. And that is not the page I'm looking for. Is that the right URL? Hmm, we may, oh, it was copied incorrectly from, let me see here, copy a link. There we go. All right, so I have my H1 black in color, but when I publish it, it goes white. Huh, okay. So it looks black here. Um, the first thing that I would do uh, yeah. to check this is if there is an interaction that's using the initial state to change the color of the font. Because you might see it in the designer, but then once you publish it, there might be an interaction changing that color. Ah, okay. And this and this is only one of the hypotheses that could be happening here. Okay. So uh, what Johnny is saying is if there's any page load interactions, you might want to check that. So I see there is a page load right here. Well, there's there's three page triggers, so maybe. And one thing that's coming out to me, it says saturation here. So maybe saturation is messing with that. Let's see here. Um, nope, doesn't seem like that's messing with it. So yeah, this is all just uh, debugging at this, oh. Oh, we have a preloader. Ooh, that's pretty. Preloaders, they're so fun. It's like the old school uh, flash days. Uh, let's go to your published site. And I'm guessing your published site is this? Yep. Oh, it's different. Which page am I on? House concert. So it's slash house concert. It's not, oops, it's not found. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, I'm going so fast, everyone switching between tabs. All right, here we go. That's the page. Oh, okay, right here. It's white. So usually what I do is inspect and, um, I look for CSS that's calling it white. Um, yeah. Why would it be white? Sometimes what I do is instead of looking for, you know, in the styles, I go to computed. So in computed, it actually, it almost like merges all the, oh. the, the properties that this element has instead of going through diff, you know, through all the different ones. Um, and there it is saying that there's a white color. Oh, okay. I didn't, oh, computed. I'm going to use this more often. Thank you. So now that we've, now that we see that it's, it's this color and I don't see any interactions added to this. Hmm. What could it be? If I click on this, will it go to it? I'm guessing it's pulling from here. So there is there is a white color added to the body tag to the body um, element. Okay. Which which could be added via custom code in project settings. Therefore, it might not render here or page settings, uh, or it could be happening in an interaction. I see global styles here. Nope, it's not in there. Yeah, it could be. It seems like it's coming from the Webflow CSS. Oh, oh, project, project, probably in your project settings. So yeah, Zio, you might want to check your project settings. There's no way for me to check your project settings. Um, maybe page settings. Nope, it's not in here. Oh, oh, wait. I think maybe this is a cause for cons 
something to be concerned about. There's a style tag, but it's not ended. Nelson, you're a genius. That is exactly it. I don't know. I'm just guessing. That that's what you do in debugging. You're just like, uh, is it here? Is it there? You're just like uncovering or opening up doors left and right. Like, hello, the bug here. The bug here. And then you, <laughs> yeah. So Zio in chat says, I'm gonna check that right now. Okay. Hopefully that helped. All right. Let's go on to the next one. And, and thank you, Johnny, for showing me computed. I never really use that tab. There's so many things in Chrome Developer Tools. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I'll just. I'll just use style because I know style. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's very, very useful, especially when you're trying to debug these things. Yes. Yes. All right. And I see there's a bug in chat. Thank you, Matthew. All right. We're going to Lauren's question. Uh, we are building a website company based on Webflow. Yay. We love to use it. And our clients are happy with the editor and more as well. Double yay. <laughs> All right. So what do you guys think about our website? Still many ideas to improve it, of course. It is in Dutch since that's our native language. Upshift.be. Okay. All right. Project review time. Here we go. And I'll just leave it in Dutch. So there we go. Your first reaction before I give mine. Go ahead, Johnny. So uh, first of all, I w I'm going to focus again on contrast. Um, okay. The legibility for the for the, the button is that could be bumped a bit. And also, it seems sort of inconsistent what you see in the hero with what you see in the nav. There's like two different types of call to actions. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if I would either stick to gradients or stick to fill colors or just try to make these part of the system. Because it seems like font size is different and color is different. And um, I would just, for the sake of consistency, try to 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 think of a, a, some sort of like systemic approach to to button styles. Okay, okay, <laughs> great first uh, reaction. Better than mine because me, I'm just like, oh, it's clean. <laughs> but <laughs> you being a uh, the designer here, it's like, oh yeah, those those buttons need to be consistent. Never thought of that, or I didn't really think about that in the first uh, six seconds of looking at this. Um, the, to me, I think it would be, I don't know if it's too much or something, if this could be some sort of Lottie animation or some sort of like, I don't know. I, it, I feel like something needs to be playful here. Like I was half expecting just right now, if I scroll some sort of parallax happening with all of these elements. But that's just me. Do, should there be animation here, or what do you think, Johnny? I think I think by having different elements kind of like overlapping, you could play a bit with that sort of like parallax. I would be mindful of parallax because not everybody processes parallax and and motion in the same way. Mm. Um, so sometimes you just don't need to go all out there and have like a huge shift. Sometimes, you know, subtle is where, where the beauty is in. Okay. All right. And we scroll down. Uh, oh, I just noticed there's like a blurred background shape right here. I like that. And I don't know if you see it on, on, on your screen, Johnny, but there is like a textured background, like, sp like specks or something like kind of like grain. Yeah. Grain. Or no mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Um, okay, right here, I feel like there could be more padding in between each card because, like, the text and the iconography is really, really close. I agree. Um, and, and, and I think, kind of like, continuing on consistency of thinking, like, the, the, the type of iconography that you're using with how you're using the fill colors and using gradients. I saw that also on the top, you have an emoji. Um, so kind of, like, deciding, you know, like, are using emojis, are using icons. Is there a way to maybe like unify that sort of like visual language? Mm. Um, and I agree with you on the on the padding. Okay. White space is good. I'm really learning from this stream. Like I, I thought the emoji is pretty nice touch. It's like, oh, okay, that's cool, you know, but then you're mixing it up with this iconography. Like, oh, okay, it needs to be more consistent. All right. Okay, so we have scroll into interaction, scroll into view interactions. I feel that the scroll inter, uh, into view interactions should 
have either a uh, more of a delay or the offset needs to be set to like 30% or 40% because the interaction is happening way too soon. And so we don't really see that fade in happen. Here, let me re refresh the page just to show you what I mean. All right. Oh, cool. You need to find that sweet spot of showing yeah. it right when you want to show it. Yeah, it should not too like, late, not too soon. Yeah, so it should be showing up like right here, like right when the browser window gets here or even here. That's when it shows up. I know there's a. It's happening way too early. See, like it happened, and I can't even read what that card card says until I get here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. So this button doesn't change color but these buttons change colors. So there's a inconsistency right there. Yeah, that just one just shifts up a little in the, in the Y axis. Okay. That one changes color made by upshift. I really like the blurred um, blobs. I agree. I, I, I like them too. I'm not sure if those are PNGs, or if it's like a div uh, with a with a with a filter, like a CSS filter. Section bubbles. Oh, these are bubbles. Okay. Hmm. Fuzzy, fuzzy. I love to see people's class names. So, okay, yeah, it's a it's a CSS shape. It's a div with a with a with a blur filter. Yeah. There it is. Found it. And that's what you did, or someone did, for the uh, Webflow community page a while ago. For the that's that's pretty much what we did. Something that that we had to be mindful about is that different browsers process filters in different ways. Um, mm -hmm. So what so what is a blur on one browser might not look exactly blurred in another browser. No. And when you're playing with interactions and you know kind of like making, perhaps you know changing the size of, of the of the shape. Kind of like to generate these kind of like you know glowing effect and then glow like it kind of glows down and then it glows again. Uh, those effects have like actually take a lot of GPU. Um, so if you do use a lot of those and you open your site as you're scrolling down, you might hear your fan kind of like, <laughs> and that yeah. might be it. So what we did in the yeah. community site and in some other pages was actually take those interactions and actually make these static. And the, just like the loading times and the process times of, of, of those pages was increased significantly. Oh, okay. So good to know. Don't use too much blur. All right. Uh, let me bring in the next one. All right. Thank you so much, Lauren. Hopefully that helped. Uh, we're going to the next one. Barry, it is still in process, but would like to know your feedback. Okay. So... Um... Let me do this. Okay. Okay. All right. Ooh. What? Okay. What? Is that Lottie? Is that a background video? It, 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 I think it was an, a background video. I don't know what that even is. I don't know what this product is. I love that video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that video got me. Yeah. Okay. So, and aerospace. I mean, you're talking, <laughs> you're talking my jam. Okay, so let's see. Okay, there's the interaction at the top with the logo, how it hides the brand name and leaves the iconography. Oh, and as you scroll, the icon spins. Okay, okay. That's interesting. That's fun. Okay, and now we have iconography here. Um,. How would you do that? I want to learn. Could you, could you hover again, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> I I think it's an SVG path uh, with some CSS animation, but I could be completely wrong. But it's a very nice effect. Yeah. I, now that I have this link, can I learn from it? <laughs> okay. Business areas. Got it. Okay. What? Okay. SpaceX. What are we doing? 
protect humans from radiation induced tissue damage. What is this company? Counteract viral pathogen. The imagery is very nice. Um, kind of scary, but nice. <laughs> That's nice. Technology. What? Okay. Um, it's very lengthy. Okay, now we're at the bottom. Oh, and the the logo comes back right at the top. All right. What do you What are your thoughts, Johnny? Go back to the top. I'm I'm going to go back again to my friend consistency. Yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like there is an opportunity to make to make some of these elements more consistent between each other. Um, and I love how spacey this site is and how elements are placed. But sometimes I feel like some elements are kind of like not lost, but just like um, floating in a way he, here, kind of like the first case where you have like the icons on the right kind of like centered uh, vertically, but, but, but then again, they're kind of like there and I'm not really sure if they're related to business or to applications or maybe to none of those. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like with all the other amazing visuals that you have, uh, whether they're renders or not, it just seems like these icons are kind of, are kind of um, not up to that standard, I think. Mm. Uh, all the other graphics are, are amazing. And, and they seemed as, as part of like one same campaign or style. Mm. Okay, I, I see that. Yeah, like these icon, uh, icons, uh, they, they don't fit the style because like you have these imagery of th this beautiful imagery that you have here. And then here it looks like um, just regular, I don't know what, like font awesome or bootstrap type of um, icons. So maybe custom icons. Yeah. All right. But yeah, keep going with this. I love the hovers. Um, yeah. And if you could scroll up a little bit, yeah. uh, that you have like the contact us button there, that's kind of like what it, what I mean. Contact us is probably a very important call to action in your page. You want people to contact you and to either lock the deal or start talking. Mm. So um, I'm not saying that that people will not click on, click on that, but if that is kind of like one of your main call to actions, then have it more visible and easier for people to process. And this could be just like, you know, stick to regular patterns of what people expect a call to action to be, uh, because if not, people might just like scroll down. And since this design is using a lot of space in between sections, mm -hmm. that that button could just be uh, missed as you're scrolling down. All right. All right. So make it more like more like a button. And I mean, you have great buttons right here. So, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, hopefully that helps, Barry. Keep going with it. Would love to see you in a future stream to, to see your progress with this. With this, But thank you. All right. Uh, next question from Eli. Welcome back, Eli. Yes, he's always here in the live streams. All right. Question about the 3DE um, uh, tip. Isn't it better to use hover state to change the text and background color instead of creating an interaction? um oh okay i think it this is about the svg hover so i noticed that in your uh demo you did an interaction where you created a, a hover hover effect um why did you choose webflow interactions rather than um the style panel hover which is css hover absolutely so what i was doing is actually not choosing the hover, I was using the click because I want this to oh, almost yeah. act as a switch. You know, once you click it, it stays one way, click it again, and, and it goes back to, to the original state. If it was hover, I would probably have done it uh, with, with um, you know, with, with the, the styles panel. Mm -hmm. But since I, I wanted two different states, I, I was using interactions for the click. Okay. All right. Makes sense. All right. Hopefully that helps. Eli, next one. Andy. Hi. Would be great to, uh, if you pick my new site, Made in Weblo, of course, for your review. Your feedback would be super important to me. Thank you. I love the stream. Yay. We love you too, Andy. All right. So this is Ander Agency, Ander.agency, your long-term design team. All right. Here we go. 
first few seconds. Oh, a lot okay. of free Lotus today. Yeah. All right. Your your thoughts uh, before I scroll down. Under agency, okay. There's some some divs moving with the mouse. Design team for long term decisions. Could be me, but legibility is not the best. Uh, again, could be subjective. Uh, boost your brand. Um, yeah. yeah, I I agree. This uh, it you a design team boost your brand decisions that's how i read it when this overlays on top i think there there's could be a different way of doing this maybe push this below your main uh, h1 i guess uh, a design team for long-term decisions and then another line boost your brand um i like i like that maybe playing with blending modes so that you can actually see the background uh like the background text while still having you know like an extra layer of a darker text. Um, but I really like what's happening in the hero. I think it's pretty unique. I haven't seen, you know, many, many treatments like this where you have like text and overlapping text and also these like shapes also overlapping. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, mouse movement, uh, mouse position interaction happening. Really cool. Let's move down. Okay. Now we got some parallax going. Okay. <clears throat> Smooth scrolling. Got it. You have some bats, okay? It's a fact you need design to make your company grow, but going through a design process can be a scary thing. I think, did I get it right? Exactly right. I feel like, I feel like if I click on a bat, it's gonna come at me. Here we go. Ah, uh, <laughs> I was half expecting that. Maybe an Easter egg or something. Uh, okay, so a scary thing. All right. Is that a font or SVG? Okay, SVG, all right. Welcome to the design process. All right. Okay, I'm still scrolling, and this has to be a lottie. Oh. What is going on? Oh, yeah, that is the design process. <laughs> does it feel like that uh, to you? Sometimes it does. Not all the time? Not all the time, though. Oh, then that's awesome. But you know what? Embrace. Embrace the scribble. Embrace that moment. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. then this part will make so much more sense. Oh wow, this is this is fun. This is huge. Everything is big. Okay, we got some position sticky going. Okay, cards. Reminds me of Monopoly cards. <laughs> this is our secret sauce. Okay, we shaped our service in three unique and powerful projects. Okay, web design, nice illustrations. Yeah. Any other comments, Johnny? So far. Um, I don't want to be this person, but I, I'm going to repeat the consistency part of like, iconography oh, this is important. And, and illustrations. This style seems kind of different to what you had before. Oh, I'm, I actually like all of those, uh, all the different styles, uh, but it seems like sometimes you're choosing like full filled shapes or like a flat, and then you're using sometimes like stroke, uh, like outline illustrations mm. with, with just like a different style. Um, I think I like these more. They feel more unique and more and kind of like more unique to to this brand. Okay, all right, and yeah, eye catching work. Okay, some of our friends. If you move your mouse, can you actually move that eye, or was that only me thinking that? Oh yeah. Oh. Oops, I went to be hands. There we go. I really like that effect. <laughs> all right, and yep. Okay. All right. Uh, last question. What is the best to create that kind of blurry circle? I know filters can be heavy on the browser. Um, maybe PNGs or SVGs. What you what would you go for if you have lots of uh, blurred uh, circles, Johnny? So I think something to try at least, and and you know it, it really depends on the on the on the base that you're working on, but. Try playing with divs and then gradient backgrounds. Um, so you can choose like uh, in, instead of having like a solid shape with a filter that almost looks like a, like a, like it was like a gra like a radial gradient starting from the center. Yeah. Actually, have a div with a radial gradient. Um, if you're trying to play with like you know glows from the top, then use gradient uh, radial gradient from starting from the top, and it's almost going to look like you have like an offset shape filter to 
200 pixels of blur. Ah, okay. So play around with the, the gradients. All mm -hmm. right. Thank you so much. Hopefully that helps Coco and Andy. Hopefully those tips uh, helped you out as well. Uh, but that's all the time we have for the reviews, the project help, and your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny, for joining us and helping with these reviews and questions. Uh, before we let you go, is there anything else that you'd like to say to, to the community? Um, I just want to share my excitement and happiness for, for what the community is pushing out. I want to give a special shout out to Melissa Mendes and Keith for having Webflow parties and literally engaging with the community so much. And they're, it's, it's, been, it's been a while since I've seen, I haven't seen the community so hyped and just like submitting creative and awesome projects uh, that are kind of like, you know, like mind blowing for me. Um, yes, agreed, agreed. That Webflow party is blowing up as well as the other Webflow organically created communities. Yeah, keep them going, keep them going. Thank you. And if people want to continue to learn from you, Johnny, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, my handle is at call me Johnny. Got it, got it. Thank you so much. And I'm going to let you go. So thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Nelson. And thanks all of you for tuning in. All right. All right, so that's the end of our stream. Uh, next week, Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, we will be having another special guest. We're going to learn how to build something from Protein. If you haven't heard of that name, look her up on YouTube. Her name is Aditi, a.k.a. Protein. She's a 13-year-old webflower creating webflow tutorials on YouTube. So subscribe to her channel, but also come back next Wednesday. She will be here. Also, if you need any account or billing support, go ahead and go to support.webflow.com, and our support team will help you out as fast as possible. If you have any design or custom code questions, go ahead and post those on our forum over at Discourse dot webflow dot com again my name is nelson thank you for joining me if you're in the live chat or you're just watching live or you're watching recording of the recording of this we appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much we'll see you next time and as always make the web beautiful together see ya